Coming up on today's show, Tesla releases its Q4 earnings report and end of year 2016 financials. BMW recalls 19,000 BMW i3 Rex range extended EVs for a problem with the fuel system. And Harley Quinn becomes an EV ambassador, sort of. These stories and more next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is funded by the in-stream ads on today's video and by the kind donations of viewers like you. Follow the link at the end of today's video to make a monthly donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign to keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, February 24th, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and this is TEN, the green car show that's considered anti-Tesla by Tesla fanboys, anti-GM by GM fanboys, and a bunch of fake liberal news lies by those who have a thing for the orange one. And yes, today's show will include a little bit of politics. It's impossible in today's modern world to ignore every single story with a political bent, so you've been warned. First up, we've got news from Tesla, which published its Q4 2016 and full year 2016 financials on Wednesday after the closing bell on Wall Street. And while Tesla did manage to beat analysts' predictions for Q4 in terms of revenue, bringing in $2.284 billion versus predictions of $2.201 billion, it also did suffer wider losses than predicted, totaling $0.78 cents per share versus the predicted $0.13 cents per share. Finishing the quarter with 3.4 billion cash in hand, the company's full year update and quarterly earnings painted a mixed picture, with the 2016 revenue up 73% from 2015, but Tesla missing its fourth quarter and 2016 delivery guidance for Model S and Model X electric cars. Looking forward, the recently acquired Solar City also has work to do, with installed solar panel totals in Q4 nearly 15 megawatts below guidance. But with Tesla solar roof products and Tesla energy products due to expand production this year, and of course Tesla Model 3 due to enter production, Tesla's got a busy year ahead. And as one analyst noted, this means bigger spending from Tesla to continue to meet those moonshot goals of Tesla CEO Elon Musk. It's going to be an interesting year. With the 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV now well and truly establishing itself in the electric car marketplace and the Tesla Model 3 due to enter production later this year, we've seen a number of existing plug-in models announce larger capacity battery packs in an effort to stay competitive in the plug-in world. And this week we heard official news that the 2017 Volkswagen e-Golf, which comes with a 50% battery capacity increase over the 2016 e-Golf model to give it 35.8 kilowatt hours of capacity, has officially been rated by the EPA as having 125 miles of range per charge. And that places the Volkswagen e-Golf one mile ahead of the recently launched Hyundai Ioniq EV in the range charts. But with the outgoing 2016 Volkswagen e-Golf coming in just under the price of the Hyundai Ioniq EV, it's unlikely that the larger capacity 2017 Volkswagen e-Golf will match the Ioniq EV on price. Unless, of course, Volkswagen doesn't change the sticker price, that is. Are we about to see a new round of EV price wars? Well, it's possible. Although in a post-Dieselgate world, Volkswagen really doesn't have a lot of spare cash. So watch this space. When pricing is released, we'll make sure you know. We're back to Tesla's Q4 earnings call for the next story, but specifically the Tesla Model 3, which we heard enough news about on Wednesday to warrant a separate section in today's show. In both the shareholder letter and during the earnings call after the release of the Q4 and end-of-year financials, Tesla CEO Elon Musk reiterated that Model 3 development is continuing apace, with Tesla due to start manufacturing of pre-production Model 3 cars at the Fremont production facility by July. Initial Model 3 series production will then begin in time for official Model 3 deliveries to start in September. As to specs, well, while Musk hinted in the earnings call that a head-up display might be making its way to Model 3, he also said that we will not hear full specs or pricing until after initial pre-production validation commences in July. If I'm honest, that's hardly a surprise given what Tesla has done in the past, but it's a pain in the butt for anyone still holding out for Model 3, especially with other cars like the Chevrolet Bolt EV now available. When it comes to engineering and overall complexity, electric vehicles are inherently less complex than internal combustion engine vehicles, since they have far less moving parts and basically a lot less to go wrong. Until, that is, you add a range-extending gasoline engine, which adds a whole load of extra complexity and a whole host of extra things that can go wrong. 
And that's been illustrated this week with news of a new recall involving the range-extended version of the BMW i3 electric car. The reason? A possible fuel vapor leak caused by the way that the fuel tank vent line is routed past the ribbed wire encasing the battery pack wiring. That routing can lead to chafed fuel cables, which could, over time, wear thin enough to sprout a leak. So far, there are no known cases of this happening, but BMW has issued a precautionary recall on all affected cars, with recall work due to start at the beginning of April. In the meantime, concerned owners can contact BMW directly for more info. Although I should note here that BMW will notify owners of affected cars that the recall is taking place. When it comes to motorsport and electric cars, there are few events as iconic as the annual Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, which for the past five years or so has illustrated time and time again how quickly electric vehicles are evolving and how much potential they have in the world of motorsport. Which is perhaps why troubled automaker Faraday Future has announced its intent to take part in this year's event, racing an FF91 electric car prototype up the world-famous mountain course. While few automakers enter production vehicles into the event, it's worth noting that Faraday Future will be going up against a race-prepared Tesla Model S P100D entered by Unplugged Performance, as well as perhaps a few other privately entered Model S. So if you want to see the established king of performance electric cars take on a new Challenger, be sure to make sure you watch the race when it takes place in June this year. And of course, when we know more about other EV competitors, we'll be sure to tell you. It's now widely accepted that in the future of the automobile, there's a significant amount of autonomous driving, either for safety reasons or for convenience of the owners. But while every automaker in the world is working on its own autonomous vehicle programs, some countries, including the US, have been slow to set regulations for autonomous vehicles. Which is why Toyota, General Motors and Lyft have all called the US government to create US-wide standards to make testing and use of autonomous vehicles easier. Currently, autonomous vehicles are legislated at the state level, meaning it's hard for automakers and software companies to carry out large-scale tests, which is why the trio of companies are making their voices known. Of course, this isn't the first we've heard of such a call. Volvo, Audi and Nissan have all pushed for the same in recent months. But with such a massive shakedown going on at the US Department of Transportation and not a lot of policy being written, things are being held up right now at the legislative level, which in turn delays autonomous vehicle rollout. Poop. Several people have been predicting it would happen, and now we've got confirmation. After 16 years as the head of Japanese automaker Nissan, CEO Carlos Ghosn, who helped drive Nissan's investment into electric cars, is handing over the reins to Hiroto Sayakawa. The reason? Not retirement, for sure. Ghosn will remain the figurehead for the Renault-Nissan Mitsubishi alliance, as well as remain the CEO of Renault and chairman of Mitsubishi. But the need to focus on lots of new side projects within the three automakers has driven him from his position. Details haven't been given at this time, but the hints are that they include continuing the goal towards lowering emissions and integrating platform sharing between the three automakers. And as a consequence, we suspect electric vehicles will still have a role to play. So while Gohan won't be head of Nissan anymore, expect to see him at plenty of future EV events. With automakers like Toyota, Honda and GM all working hard to both lower the cost of hydrogen fuel cell stacks through better manufacturing techniques, and the hydrogen fuel cell car of the future should be, at least theoretically, a lot cheaper to buy than cars of today. But of course, that's only part of what's needed before hydrogen cars can even hope to become mass market. The other, if we assume there's an easy way to produce hydrogen cleanly in large quantities, is refueling infrastructure, which is why petroleum company Shell has entered into a new infrastructure building program to bring hydrogen to filling stations across the world. The start, bringing hydrogen to a total of seven filling stations in California and installing a new set of hydrogen filling stations at existing petrol stations in the UK. It's a massive investment, but it's also a logical one, since if everyone does either transition to electric or hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, hundreds of filling stations around the world will need a new business plan in order to survive. And while I'm sure many of you would rather electric take dominance, me included, there are some situations where hydrogen could still be useful. So it makes sense to have both side by side. 
We're off to California now, where Alphabet's Waymo has taken legal action against Otto, the self-driving truck company, and its parent company Uber, for allegedly using key parts of Waymo's self-driving technology without permission. The legal act, essentially one of patent infringement, revolves around the LiDAR technology that Waymo has spent years developing, technology which it says has been duplicated by a former employee when they left the company and founded Otto. Worse still, when Otto was acquired by Uber, one of the main reasons for its acquisition was supposedly its advanced LiDAR tech, which Waymo says it owns. But it wasn't until Waymo had a supplier inadvertently send its drawings of what it said was Uber's LiDAR circuit board that Waymo decided to do further digging alleging that six weeks before resigning his position at a company, one engineer downloaded over 14,000 design files from Waymo's system, including 9.7 gigabytes of confidential blueprints and design specifications. Other employees who left Waymo for Otto appear to have followed similar practices, resulting in Waymo's decision to sue. Industrial espionage? Anyone? You might know her best as Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad, or you may remember her early days as Donna Friedman on Australian Soap Neighbours. But either way, actress Margot Robbie hit the headlines for a different reason this week when she became Nissan's official EV ambassador, the first one, charged with promoting its zero-emission battery vehicles around the world. Her first job? Racing Nissan's Blade Glider prototype around the Monaco Grand Prix circuit at midnight in suitable big screen style, complete with some drifting action on its corners. But while it's great to have an EV ambassador, this particular race does feel just, just a tad unrealistic and makes me feel that there's some significant CGI going on here. Yes, Nissan does indeed have a couple of blade gliders that work, but well, there's more stunt than not in this ad. And that's left me feeling, well, a little bummed out. Honestly, Suicide Squad is a little more believable than this film. Sorry, Nissan. Time to switch gear now and move on to the political story of this week's show, namely that a whole bunch of mainstream automakers have officially written to the newly appointed head of the EPA, Scott Pruitt, to ask him to scrap 2025 EPA admission standards set by the Obama administration just before the inauguration of President Trump earlier this year. The reason? They say the upcoming fuel economy targets threaten the entire automotive industry. And by they, I mean GM, Ford and Fiat Chrysler in one letter, and a second letter written by a lobbying association representing Aston Martin, Ferrari, Honda, Hyundai, Isuzu, Kia, Maserati, McLaren, Nissan, Subaru, Suzuki, and Toyota. I can already hear sharp intakes of breath, so I'm going to keep this one short, but it's worth noting too that a few days ago, a massive court-mandated release of emails from Scott Pruitt's time as an Oklahoma Attorney General shows that he colluded with both oil and natural gas companies behind the scenes, copying and pasting lobbyists' emails and signing them with his own name. So the only hope right now is that perhaps he'll be removed from his role before doing serious damage at the EPA. I'll watch this space. And finally, we're off to the racetrack for our final story today, courtesy of Electric GT, which has confirmed that it will be using race-prepared Tesla Model S P100Ds for its new season, which, when stripped down, can hit 60 miles per hour in just 2.0 seconds, or 100 kilometers per hour in 2.1 seconds. It's also confirmed in the inaugural race season for 2017, including Silverstone in the UK, Assen in the Netherlands, and the Nuremberg DTM circuit in Germany. In total, seven races have been booked across Europe, although we should note that the dates are only provisional at the current time. And unlike for Formula E, the first race of the 2017 season for which took place last weekend, and also included the world's first robo race and subsequent autonomous vehicle race car crash, the electric GT races are taking place on real racetracks, just like the grown-up race series it wants to be. I'm super excited and I hope to make it to at least one of the races. Here's hoping. And that brings us to the end of this week's show. But before I do, I just want to thank all of the viewers and readers who've sent the Gordon Bloomfield family well wishes this week. You'll be pleased to know that today we finally received approval for continued treatment for our ill family member. And so we're all taking a big sigh of relief right now. And with that signed off, it should mean that we're able to get back to more regular production schedules. So don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, follow us at Transport Evolved on Twitter, and visit transportevolved.com for regular updates on the world 
world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. That and of course the usual like, comment and subscribe of course. And as always, if you liked what you saw today and want to be able to help us make more shows like this, please consider making a donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign, a link for which is at the end of this video and also in the description below. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next week. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a fantastic weekend. That was 10. And until next time, keep evolving.